Good morning, my name is Lorraine Wilson and I have the pleasure and the privilege of being the Director of Faith Formation here at Center Congregational Church in Linfield, Massachusetts. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ and we are so glad that you have joined us. Today is a special Sunday for us as we celebrate 15 years of being an open and affirming congregation. Pre-COVID-19, we had planned to meet and update our welcome statement, and we still plan to do that. We have a great team of folks who are committed to that process, and many of them will join us for worship today. To remind us of our commitment, I would like to share our existing covenant with you. Center Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, is an open and affirming church. We welcome all people, including gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people, into the full life and ministry of the congregation, including membership, leadership, ordination, and employment. Center Congregational Church's policy seeks to be consistent with the open and affirming declaration of the United Church of Christ adopted in 1985. So please remember that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So let us turn our hearts and our minds to the reason that we have gathered this morning, the worship of our God. We come today representing all the majesty of creation. Diverse and beautiful, blessed and beloved, all made in the image of the creator of all things. We come today, called to this time and place by an infinite God. Who hears our cries and responds with love and mercy. We come today, transgender, non-binary, bisexual, two-spirit, lesbian, intersex, gay, queer, ally. We come today knowing you will listen and answer our needs. We come today knowing you care for us. We come today knowing that even when others reject us, your arms are op open to offer comfort. We come. Good morning, Center Church. It is my honor and privilege to introduce you to our special guest preacher for this 15th anniversary ONA Sunday. I met Owen Gilbo at Andover Newton Theological School during my first semester in our Old Testament class. But our friendship really developed through the delightful, fun, hard, challenging, ridiculous, and sometimes a little unhinged conversations that were a staple in the Ants Cafe. I'm so lucky to count Owen among the deep and abiding friendships that not only survived, but thrived beyond the hill in Newton Center. Owen is a beloved child of God, 
blessed to be a son, husband, father, grandfather, brother, and uncle. He lives in Albany, New York with his wife, Betsy, and their little dog, Rookie, who some of you met at our summer kickoff barbecue two summers ago. He currently works as a diversity and inclusion specialist with the New York State Department of Civil Service in Albany. Owen is an LGBTQ plus advocate focusing on transgender advocacy. He is a founding board member with Gender Equality New York, whose mission is to educate, advocate, and empower the transgender transgender, non-binary, and intersex community of New York. Owen and his wife are members of the First Presbyterian Church of Albany, where he serves on the Social Justice and Peacemaking Committee, among, among other things. So first, my friends, we will hear from Katie Swain Garish, the text that Owen has chosen to preach from this morning, and then you will hear a good word from my friend, Owen Gilbo. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 and 2. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 7, 13 through 16. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem in me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? O oh, where can I flee from your presence? For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your hot eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written, all the days that were formed for me, when none of them yet existed. The Gospel reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, whenever you give alms... Do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Good morning, Center Church, and happy Pride from Albany, New York. Also, happy of Open and Affirming Sunday for those in the UCC, and happy anniversary, Center Church, on your 15th anniversary of becoming an Open and Affirming Church. So much to celebrate. Yes, even in these times of trial and unrest, we take time to celebrate all that is good, and look forward to growing deeper in our relationship as a Christian community. I want to say thank you to your pastor and my dear friend, Reverend Nancy, for inviting me to share my message, and for you for joining us today and tuning in to hear it. I'd like for us to take a moment and ask ourselves, how do we know that a church 
is welcoming. Can we identify how, if a stranger were to look at the beautiful building, historic building, they will know that they are welcome to join its members in worship? Is it just the building? Is it the sign that says all are welcome? Have, you, have any of you ever been somewhere where the sign says all are welcome and you got inside and clearly all did not mean all? I certainly have. You know the place I'm talking about. You walk in, someone hands you a bulletin and says, good morning, and that's it. You're on your own. And as you scan the sanctuary to find a place to sit, you know all eyes are on you. Oh yeah, they're checking you out. Are you dressed properly for their church? Are you going to sit in someone's pew? Come on, you know there are people who own their pew. And you best not sit there. Trouble is, as a stranger, you do not know which pews are safe to sit in. And phew, you just made it in the door and already there isn't a feel of welcome. Now imagine if you are a stranger who identifies as gay, lesbian, transgender, or queer. How does that stranger know that they are welcome? Is it just a rainbow stripe on a sign, a rainbow flag? or banner? Well, that's a start. I know firsthand that Center Church is a welcoming church. My wife, Betsy, our little dog, Rookie, and I crashed one of your summer picnics in June of 2018. We just showed up to surprise Reverend Nancy and were enthusiastically welcomed, invited to, en to enjoy lunch and fantastic desserts and sit in the shade your beautiful trees and visit with church members. We were made to feel as if we belonged in just a very short time. And we thank you for that. What didn't go unnoticed by us was your sign with its rainbow and all are welcome message. And inside the display that tells of Center Church's commitment or covenant to be an open and affirming, and affirming church, we noticed because that matters to us. It says something to us. What you probably didn't know at the time was that I identify as a member of the LBGTQ community. I am a transgender man, and that sign and covenant means something to me. It says something. But the sign and the covenant, that's not the end of it. No, in fact, it's just a beginning. So what does it mean to be an open and affirming church in the UCC? Well, your covenant states, we welcome all people, including gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people into the full life and ministry of the congregation, including membership, leadership, ordination, and employment. I'd like to I'd like you to take a moment again and think about Center Church, your community. Are you living up to that covenant? Are there ways in which you can imagine a more open and affirming community? To be open and affirming goes beyond a mere welcome. It goes beyond an invitation to simply join a community beyond simple inclusion. To be open and affirming calls for a radical welcome. Growing deeper in commitment to one another, to being open and affirming requires what Episcopal Reverend Can Canon Stephanie Spellers calls moving from invitation to inclusion to radical welcome. Invitation offers to someone the opportunity to join your community and assimilate or adopt your values. 
and acceptance of the person depends on their ability to become like the dominant identity of the community. In other words, if you want to be like us, you're welcome here. The message of inclusion is help us to be diverse. Marginalized people are welcome. There is a stated commitment to inclusivity, but no real shift is made in the community's culture or practices. The community doesn't really change or reflect all, though there may be pockets of difference. Now, radical welcome has a whole different message. As Reverend Spellers explains it, radical welcome says, bring your culture, your voice, your whole authentic self. We want to engage in a truly mutual relationship. The expectation is that of a community relationship where all are safe to be who they are, who they truly are, are seen for who they are, their voice is truly heard, where all belong and contribute, contribute to the community's identity and culture. Radical Welcome offers a place at the table to be accepted, as the UCC says, into the full life and ministry of the congregation, including membership, leadership, ordination, and employment. An open and affirming church is called to radical welcome. We are called to celebrate each other as God celebrates us. Psalm 139 reminds us how wonderfully made all of us are, that we are known by God and found to be wonderful. God does not distinguish straight from gay, lesbian, or bisexual and deem one better than the other. God does not distinguish between cisgender and transgender or non-binary and deem one better than the other. No, God knows us and deems all of us wonderful. The psalmist writes, for it was you who formed my inward parts you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. God celebrated us before we were born. God celebrates you, God celebrates me. Why then wouldn't we all celebrate each other as God does? Why wouldn't we as a Christian community offer radical welcome to the stranger? We are called to radical welcome. Do we hear God's still speaking voice? As a transgender man, I know firsthand how difficult it can be to find radical welcome, not just in church, in many other places. I know that if you do not fit society's norms and expectations, if you do not fit in, you are likely not going to get more than an invitation. Now, I'm from a bit older generation, and thankfully, things are improving somewhat for the LBGTQ youth of today, but there is still a long, long way to go. When there are those in society, in our communities, in our own families, who ridicule you, condemn you, reject you, try to erase you, to deny your basic human rights because of who you are, because of your gender identity or sexual orientation, life is hard. Life is scary. Life can seem to be too much some days. 
So we search. We search for respite. We search for hope. We search for reassurance that things will get better. We find reassurance in our reading from Isaiah today when we are reminded that, that the Lord says, I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. The reassurance, God is with us always. In this reassurance is hope, but still we search. We search for the concrete here on earth. We search for those places where we belong, where we are seen, are heard, are valued, are loved, and are celebrated. Is Centered Church one of those places? Can the stranger find radical welcome here within the Centered Church community? Can I, as a transgender man, and all of my LBGTQ siblings, can we find radical welcome here? From what, I am from what I have experienced and what I understand of Center Church's community, I believe I can. I believe others can too. Do you, as a member of Center Church, believe it? The thing about radical welcome is that when it is truly offered to all, we celebrate each of us as God celebrates us. For when we see God's delight in each other, we see God. That is all any of us really want. To be known, to belong, to be loved, for who we are. None of us are any different. We are no different in our desire to find such a place, an open and affirming place. So in closing, I wanna share what Reverend John Vandelar, a Methodist minister in South Africa wrote about our longing. It's entitled, A Place for Us. We long to find a place to relax, O oh God, to lean into the welcome and the love of real friends who stay true no matter what we are, no matter who we are or what we've done. We want to be known, not just our names, but ourselves, our dreams and longings, our fears and failings, and be warmly Un, uh, unrestrainedly welcomed. We yearn to know the joy of opening our arms to others and seeing them melt and grow soft in the safety of our acceptance. And you have created a place like this for us, a place of people with failings and disagreements who still look out for one another, a place of difference and struggle where we can all belong. A place of faith and deep doubt. A place of awkward stumbling toward Christ-likeness. A place of worship, of mystery, and of rest. And although we can't always see it, although sometimes it doesn't feel like it, this is the place here, not the buildings and the furniture, no, these people who gather each week in your name and try so hard to remember each other's. And for this place and your being with us, we give our heartfelt gratitude and devotion. Amen.
Gracious God, you love all that you have created and you celebrate the diversity of your creation. Throughout your history with your people, you have reminded us that those whom the world sees as the least are the greatest in your eyes. We ask that you give us the grace to celebrate with our gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender sisters and brothers as they choose to live authentically in the world. Teach us to honor and celebrate their gifts and help us to create a world in which gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender teenagers and adults are loved, accepted, and celebrated in every gathering and every congregation. We ask this in your many names. And hear us now, O God, as we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, Center Church friends. It's so wonderful to be with you on this ONA Sunday, celebrating 15 years of being open and affirming as a church community. And as our call to action this morning, I wanted to talk a little bit with you about what it means to be an ally and some simple ways that you can do that. So what is an ally? An ally is a person who has genuine and strong concern for the LGBT community, a person who supports, accepts, and advocates for our equal rights and our inclusion in society, a person who understands and confronts when possible the challenges that we face and experience every day. So how can you be a better ally? I think first staying informed, educating yourself, asking questions, doing research, doing the work of being an ally and not being afraid to be honest about what it is that you don't know I personally welcome your, your questions. Um, and if there are ways that um, I can be supportive in your journey to be an ally, I would be happy to do that. Um, another way is speaking up. So when you're in a group and you hear something offensive or you hear something that's untrue or pejorative about LGBT people, I know it can be awkward, but saying nothing is not the answer. Saying nothing says that you're complicit. Saying nothing says that you agree with the people around you. And so being willing when safe and possible to disagree with people who are saying things that um, you know to be harmful or untrue is really, really very powerful. Being honest, so speaking openly about your family members, your friends, your colleagues who are LGBT, as long as they are out and comfortable with your doing so, being able to talk about them with ease with other people gives those other people permission to do the same. And it normalizes our existence in families and in, in society. Um, supporting equality, so supporting policies um, at school, at work, um, in our church community um, that help protect LGBT people from discrimination. Even if the issues seem small to you, they can have a huge impact on um, folks' lives. So if you hear of an unfair rule or policy, um, talk openly about that and see if there's a way in which you can make a change. And then finally, come out yourself, come out as an ally, um, help other people to understand that you support the LGBT community. Um, and maybe that looks like supporting um, your local uh, gay straight alliance um, at the middle school or, or high school. Um, maybe that looks like supporting uh, a youth organization that provides for LGBT people. Um, and I think that Another important thing to understand is that as an LGBT person myself, I'm also an ally because I'm cisgender and I 
am an ally to my trans siblings, um, not just as a parent of two transgender children, but also um, as a member of the community, understanding that there are things that I don't experience every day because I'm cisgender, that trans people um, do face um, and understanding um, how I can better support them. And I think also um, it is a powerful experience to be part of a community that is so open and accepting. Center Church, you have a gift and your gift is extravagant welcome. And I feel just so honored and privileged to be a part of this community where I am welcomed, my family is welcomed, and I watch you welcome in um, folks who may be very different from you, but you do that with open arms because you understand that the call is to be open, the call is to be affirming to all people, regardless of their sexual orientation, their gender identity, their ethnicity, their racial background, um, they're having a disability or not. And I think that understanding that as one of your many, many gifts is a really important thing. So I thank you, my family thanks you, and I send you out with the um, challenge of understanding what it means to be an ally. Amen. Good morning. My name is Madeline Law, and I am the daughter of Jeff Law, who serves as a deacon in the church. Um, I have been connected to Center Church since I was probably about five years old, and I wanted to come on to here to wish everyone a happy Pride Sunday, and also to talk a little bit about my connection to my faith along with um, my sexuality and my work in the, in the LGBT community. So growing up at Center Church, as an open and affirming church was really very important to me and to my parents. Um, from a young age, I just saw so many examples of unconditional love within the church and the faith community. I can remember being about eight years old and witnessing a baptism and there being a little girl up front and her two dads who were there and sort of like talking to my parents and them explaining this little girl has two fathers and they're up there the same way that you would see a mother and a father and they are there to witness the baptism of their child. And everyone in the church was just so happy for them, congratulating them, didn't treat the baptism or the parents as if they were any different from any other couple who were here to share this moment with their community. And I think that really very much did sort of lay the groundwork for then growing up, me sort of knowing that just how important it is in one's faith to be open and accepting. And so then when I have encountered different situations in other churches where they have not been as open and accepting, sort of knowing and being able to go back to, I am affirmed in this faith and people like me are affirmed in this faith, which was also very key when I began to sort of question my gender identity, my sexuality, anything having to do with that. So having a church that is open and affirming has been very important to me. Um, in current connections to my faith, I work at an LGBTQ youth center in Salem called Nagley, and I am a peer leader there, and I have had discussions with youth and staff um, about Center Church and the experiences that I have had being very open and being in an open and affirming community. I have had fellow staff members come to me and say, I really have been very disconnected from my faith, and I would like to come back into the community, but I don't know how, and I don't know where to start. And that is sort of how I was able to build a connection or to help facilitate a connection between Nagley and with the help of um, Lorraine Wilson with Center Church. Um, and we recently had Lorraine and her wife were kind enough to offer to make masks for our youth during this time with the coronavirus and the pandemic. And they donated many masks for our youth, for our staff, um, child sized ones, adult ones. And we really are very thank thankful because especially working in a marginalized population where many people do not have access to um, basic PPE items and having to go out and work and everything like that. So I'm really very thankful for the connection that has recently started to grow between an organization that I love that affirms who I am and my gender and my sexuality and between a place that I have grown up in since I was a child, such as Center Church. Um, other than that, I would just like to wish everyone a very happy Pride Sunday. And again, just reiterate how thankful I am 
for this community and knowing that no matter where I am in my faith journey or in my journey of knowing who I am, that I will always have a community here ready to receive me and others with open arms. Thank you. Let us go forth from our time together and greet all of those we encounter. All people, regardless of their gender identity, sexual orientation, race, nationality, ability, or creed. Let us greet them with radical welcome. And may the love of the compassionate God who delights in us, the fire of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and with those you hold dear, and with those who no one holds dear, both this day and forevermore.